video we're going to take a look at a legal problem called minimal falling path sum. So given a n times n array integer uh, matrix, we want to find the minimum sum of any falling path through the matrix. So basically the idea of this question is we're given a 2D integer array and we want to find a path that has the minimum sum from the first row, right, from the top row, which is this one, down to the bottom, uh, I should say through the bottom row, right? So you can see here, there are two falling paths or two paths that has a minimum path sum. So we're starting, we can start any elements, right? In this case, any elements in the first row. We can start two, one, and three. So you just, in this case, we have a path. If we start at one, we have five, seven, right? Which gets us to the bottom or the bottom row, through the bottom row, right? And then in, in this case, another path will be one plus four plus eight will also give us through the bottom row. So you can see that their sum is both 13. So that's the minimum sum that we're gonna return at the end. We don't want to know which path, we just wanna know the minimum sum from the top row get to the bottom row, okay? And you can see here, we also have another example where we could have negative values, right? If we have negative values, we have to try with all examples. But if there's a situation where we don't have the left, you can see there we don't have the left diagonal, then in this case, we're just going to choose uh, or traverse or check if the current options path are, uh, we're just trying to find the minimum sum of our current path, right? Or all the options that we have. Either uh, either we go this way or we go diagonally, right? And then simply here, if we only have one element and then the minimum falling path or the minimum path to reach the bottom is gonna be it's just gonna be uh, the element itself. How can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, basically for each and every single element, we have three choices, right? In this case, you can go to the uh, diagonally, right? You can go diagonally, you can go um, bottom, right? You can go to the bottom or you can go to diagonally right. And then for each of those elements, we also have three decisions as well. We can go here, we can go here, and we can go here, right? To find the minimum path, the minimum path sum. And in this case, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down to a sub problem. And the sub problem is this. The sub problem is that if we want to figure out what's the minimum path sum for this element to reach to the bottom, I need to know the minimum path sum for the children elements, right? In this case, the children elements is either diagonally left or bottom or bottom or diagonally right. So in this case, what I need to do is I need to do a DFS to search all three paths. And what it will do is we'll return back to say, okay, uh, it will return back, right? The minimum sum for each and every single path. And once I know the minimum sum for each and every single path, then the minimum sum for the current element. What's the current element? This is the current element, right? This is the current element right here. This is the current element. And we want to, to understand, the, to, to know the minimum sum for this element, I need to know the minimum sum for my children element. And uh, the minimum sum for my children uh, element plus the current element's value will be the minimum sum for this element right here. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna return the minimum sum for this element back to its parent stack, right? Back, back to its parent's position, tell its parent, this is my minimum sum, okay? And then pa the parent stack will also have to uh, make a decision based on all its children's value, right? You can see here we have here, we have here, maybe some of them will be out of bound. So what we had to do is we have to make a decision, right? So this will be our top-down approach where we're going to uh, start at the first row, right? Each and every single element in our first row, we traverse down the path, right? And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna also gonna use memoization because you, you, if you notice here, like if we were to do this approach where we have a top-down approach, um, you can see that um, here, right? We're going here, we're making a call here, we're making a call here. But if we were here, if we were at this element right here, maybe I'll zoom in a bit. So like if I were here, right, I have to make, I have to go down this path and this path and this path. But the thing is, if I were here, I already visit this path and I already visit this path as well. So what we can do is we can cache this result in a 2D array. And this will basically improve the time complexity down to a n square, right? The reason why I say n square, because in the question, you can see here we have a n times n array. 
So in this case, we basically go into have a time complexity of n times n, which is n square, right? And the space complexity is going to be n square as well. So let's take a look at how I did there. So this is the memoization approach. And you can see here in the memoization approach, uh, what I did was I first make this in a global variable, right? So matrix and the length of the matrix. Then I create a cache array uh, with the size of n times n. And then here you can see we also have a minimum path sum to the bottom. So for each and every single elements, right? For each and every single elements in the first row, okay? What we're gonna do is we're going to um, do a DFS to, to each and every single path, right? To each and every single element. Um, and then we're just going to get the minimum path sum to the bottom, right? And at the end, we're just gonna return the minimum path sum. So inside the helper, basically I have a row and a column. And then first we wanna see if this current coordinate is actually within the boundary. If it's not, we're just gonna return integer.max, right? Because we could have, if we could have a integer.max if this is out of bound, but then there's could be another smaller values. And this will basically just um, give us the minimum value, right? And that's what we did here is first we check to see if this is the last row. If it's the last row, we're just not gonna continue to do the DFS anymore, right? So we're just gonna return the current element, say the minimum path, the minimum uh, path sum for, from the current element, if we're at the last row to the bottom is just gonna be the current value itself, right? And maybe a perfect example will be if I have just 2D array with just one element, right? The minimum path, right? If I pass in the coordinate is zero, zero. So I know this is not out of bound, but then I know this is at the last row. So in this case, the, the, the minimum path to reach the bottom is gonna be one. So you can see here, what I did is, then I check to see if the current coordinate is cached in our cache 2D array. If it's not, we just compute it. If it does, we're just gonna return the pre-computed value. So then what we're gonna do is, I'm going to do a DFS for to search all three paths Right, go to the bottom, go to the bottom left, go to the bottom right. Find me the minimum path to the bottom, okay? And then based on those answers, I'm going to find the minimum path for the current position to the bottom. And then here, we're going to cache it, right? So in this case, the minimum path to the bottom for its children, but I need for the minimum path to, to the bottom for the current position is gonna be the minimum path sum to the bottom from its children, right? plus the current element's position will give us the minimum path to the bottom for the current position. And we're gonna store that in our cache and return that as to the to the parent stack, right? And then here you can see here, once we return that back, we are going to compare that with the minimum path sum to the bottom that we have seen so far. And at the end, we're gonna return the minimum path sum that we to the bottom that we have seen so far, right? So this will give us a time complexity of n times n and let's take a look at how we can improve this using a DP, right? So, or a bottom-up approach. So to do this using a bottom-up approach, like basically what we can do is uh, we can use a nested for loop and we're basically starting at the second row. Uh, the reason why we're starting at the second row is because uh, all we need to do here, right? In this case, all we need to do is we're, like we know the minimum path um, or the minimum path sum to the bottom if we're at the last row, right? In this case, the minimum path to the bottom, in this case, seven for this element. And the minimum path for this element right here is gonna be eight because eight plus, plus eight, the next element is just out of bound, right? In, in this case, we're at the bottom row. So the minimum path for this element to reach the bottom is eight. So we don't have to compute the last row. All we have to do is we just have to start at the second last row and then just work our way up work our way up all the way to the, the, the first row. And then what we're gonna do is that for each and every single element, we want to know the minimum path to the bottom based on the children uh, answer, right? Based on the bottom row answer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, basically have a helper function. We pass in the coordinate, which is this is the bottom left, right? Dino left, this is the uh, hold on, this is the bottom and this is the bottom left. And then we also have bottom right. And then what we're gonna do is we're basically first check to see if this is out of bound. If it's out of bound, we're gonna return integer.max value. Otherwise, we're gonna return matrix at row at column, 
right? So which is the pre-computed value. And so bottom row is always the pre-computed value. We're just going to return that and then assign it to, the, to these variables. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna see who has the smallest value. Whoever has the smallest, um, the path sum will plus the current element will give us the minimum path sum for the current element, right? Just is the, the, the algorithm is the same. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna iterate. And then for each and every single column, right? Notice, notice that we're starting at the second row, the last second row. And then for each and every single row, uh, we're just gonna iterate all the columns to find the, um, to, ca to calculate each and every single result. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, because our answer relies on the first row, so we just do a linear search to find the minimum path sum to the bottom uh, for each and every single element that we have in our first row. And then this will give us the answer. And notice that this will give us a time complexity of big O of n times n, where, where still is, we, we're getting a n times n time and space complexity. So how can we better improve this? Well, what we can do is we can just use a two array, right? We're going to have a current array and a previous array. And uh, basically, we're just going to um, store like store the last row as the previous row and the current row is going to is going to do the computation based on the previous row and this will give us a time complexity of 2n or in this case we can drop the space complexity to just n or linear and uh, basically i didn't do that uh, problem or i didn't do that in code but you get an idea right we can be able to drop the space complexity down to a linear by just using two arrays okay and then after for each and every single iteration, we can just get pre where the previous array is uh, equal to the current array and current array is equal to a brand new integer array, right? And this will pretty much just give us a space complexity of linear. So there you have it and thank you for watching.